So uh, I'm sitting here in, uh, I guess you would call it uh, South Georgia or central to South Georgia. And I'm actually sitting here today with uh, an amazing couple, uh, George and Susan Perriman. And uh, we're really excited to see what they got to share. Uh, obviously, uh, they've been avid hounds people uh, for most of their life. So uh, George and Susan, I'm going to say welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So, uh, George, we'll start out with you. Why don't you tell the folks a little bit of who you are and, and uh, kind of, you know, where you grew up and, and maybe, you know, kind of just a, a backdrop of, of you guys. Well, I'm 70, 70 years old. I grew up and I left here in six, when I was six years old and then I went to Florida and Uly, Florida. And I live on Crandall Road for 47 years. I had the best of both worlds, deer hunting, coon hunting, and all, and fishing. Had real good fishing, and I just grew up my life in them woods. That's so then, then I moved back to Perkins, Georgia, my hometown, and I don't do a lot of hunting. I mean, I don't do a lot of going in the woods, but I still love the, love the portion of it. You know, I guess I wore myself out just just old now. But I still love to, to watch my grandsons and my sons, and they're all, well, I'd say they was 10 times better than I was when I, come, when, when I was coming up. But they they had them electronics. We didn't have them electronics. And we had to walk. A lot of people don't believe this, but I can prove it. But I have been in the woods and seen the coon go up the tree training dogs. And let's I, uh, let's talk a little bit about that, George. Is in your early years, uh, was training dogs, was that kind of your passion, taking a young dog? and Is that kind of what you uh, enjoyed doing? Right, right. And after they got started good, I really didn't have a passion for them. I mean, I wanted to take, I took puppies that was three or four months old and tree coons with them. Not, I'd tree a cage coon with them now. I, I don't want to be honest about all this. But I'd turn the coon out with a rope on it where I could catch the coon again. Yeah. And I had the best of both worlds. I had a seed orchard. Nothing but pines where they'd get pine cones back. And that's how I trained them dogs. I mean, they wouldn't be three or four months old, sit there and treat like a, a world champion, you know. Oh yeah, so uh, uh, George, did you grow up uh, around a family of hunters? Did your did your did your folks hunt? Did your dad hunt? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And my I got a friend. Well, I got several friends. What when the first at first I hunted with a black guy named Leroy. He was a good good guy. Me and him, I he didn't have no truck or lot, and I'd have to go pick him up. Me and him hunt, hunt all night long, you know. And then Johnny Merritt, me and him started hunting. And my daddy would go with me once in a while. He was about like I'm, I am now, not able to get around. But uh, I had a I had a wonderful time when I was growing up. Absolutely. How did you uh, How did you and Leroy become friends? I mean, is it something oh, in school over, or just? No, this was this guy was older than me. You okay. Know, yeah. I, I, my daddy hunted with him. Well, I've I've known Leroy all my life, good guy, and uh, but I met him through my daddy, and uh, he done work for my daddy and different things, and we just took it over and hunted when I was younger, and then me and this other guy I met named Johnny Merritt, which was a coon hunter, hardcore coon hunter, and uh, we hunted together, and. We had some good dogs, real good dogs. I was, I was his handler, and uh, so you so you would have competition hunted then. Oh yeah, but nothing like this. Nothing right. like they do today, you know. Right. But this was UKC and things like that. And then it just 
What, um, uh, so you, you would have probably started hunting five, six, seven years old. Is that it? Yes, sir. In, uh, what was, uh, in your mind, George, going back to that, uh, I know for me, I can remember vividly when I got my first, uh, dog, I, 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 I would like to call it a coon hound, but I never did tree a coon with her, but it's what I, it, we, we wasn't raised, you know, we was, we was kind of raised, uh, you know, not poor, uh, but we didn't have a lot of extra money. So uh, we had to do with what we had, and I never did tree a coon with her, but going back, uh, what was the first dog that I guess you would have maybe got that you could have called your own that, you know, really stood out to you? Well, I bought two red dick puppies at eight weeks old. Well, naturally, I'm going to start training them right then. And it was the mama, the mama, the way that they did. I mean, they I'd take that cage coon, walk him, put him up a tree, and they'd all let them out. They'd trail that coon up, they'd go tree that coon. And it just, you know, just blossomed from there. And then they started treeing up, uh, shoot, I would say three months old. And then at six months old, running tree their own coons. And then naturally I got tired of them and started over and bought another dog, you know. But nowadays, there ain't no way I could touch one of them dogs of what I paid for them. Right. If you recall, what would you have paid maybe for them two red tip puppies? Would you remember? I don't know that they wouldn't give to me. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. Now your dad, your dad hunted. Now did he? Did he coon hunt or did he? I know you guys. You had mentioned that you guys would run uh, deer with dogs as well. Right. Yeah. But he uh, coon hunted. He coon He'd rather well. coon. Huh? He wouldn't give a nickel to kill a deer. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he would have, so this would have been probably back, you know, not to date ourselves, but this would have probably been back, what, in the, probably the 60s, 60s yeah. at least. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I I was real fortunate. I lived in, a, uh, right beside a 150,000 acre tree farm, and I hunted mega coons everything you know no truck to drive but i i'd ride and come out of them woods you know dead tired get up the next that uh night and go again do it walking over. walking yeah yeah and just literally that's how i lived right now uh um growing up i know for me uh, I would get a few of the magazines uh, growing up, but um, when would have been your first run in maybe, uh, you know, I guess in your year, early years, what's a, a dog maybe that you hunted with uh, that really stood out to you or maybe some people that you got to hunt with that kind of made you start thinking in your mind setting the bar a little higher? Oh, a dog named Ripper. Okay. Tell us a little bit about Ripper. Did Ripper? you own Ripper? Well, I might as well own her because I, I kept him. And my buddy Johnny Merritt had a dog named, oh, let me think here a minute. Was this dog's daddy, and he owned it and bred it to his jib. Okay. And this was a puppy off of it. I made it a night champion, and just great dog, good dog. Independent, by himself. You know, he was a good dog. Absolutely. And back then, uh, to make a dog a night champion, uh, when you go to these hunts, uh, the hunts, local hunts was a little bit different then than they are now. So it, it, to make a dog a night champion was, was, uh, kind of a big deal. Oh yeah. 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 Tell us a little bit about that. Do you remember the night you got the first place win on him? Well, the wind was blowing a hundred miles an hour and that ain't no joke. It was bad, raining yeah. bad. And I think I, I scored, I don't remember exactly how well I scored, but about a 200 or something. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, well, I ain't going to make him a night champion. I get back to the clubhouse. Jack Wade, personal friend, coon hunter, he said, how'd you do? I said, well, I, ain't do no, I didn't do good enough to make him a night champion. He said, what did you score? I said, I think a 225, 250, something like that. 
And he laughed. He said, ain't nobody, ain't nobody beating you. He said, because ain't nobody treated a coon. And that's how I made him a night champion. Wow. Uh, Jack Wade, now, would he been a, uh, did you? Did he you... was the master of hounds. Okay. Jack was a coon, uh, an abbot coon hunter. He, he just, he just liked to, but the dogs that he had, he didn't want them to go out there in the tree. He wanted them to go out there and run. And that's because he was well. He wanted in a tree, but he didn't really make no difference. As long as that dog would go out there and run, he thought that dog was a coon dog. Right now, uh, the club that you would have hunted at, would you remember that? Nassau. What did they call that season? Nah. That's all coon club or something okay. like that. Did you, was you, was you actively involved in the coon club oh. growing up? Okay, what was, what was the coon, coon club that you would have been involved with? Just a little town coon, you know, we'd hunt once a month or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I did all the barbecuing for them when they'd have a big hunt, you know. Yeah. The cookouts and try wow. to hunt it at night. Well, I can tell you, I've I've been very fortunate to taste some of your barbecue, and uh, uh, I can tell you, George, uh, I've always enjoyed that part of it, and I know it's kind of a passion of yours too. So it's been a passion of uh, that side of it's been a passion of yours for a long time as well. I've been cooking with my daddy ever since I was probably eight years old, man. That is, that that brings back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That brings back a lot of good memories. Yeah. I know that's uh, you know, it's things like that, George. That we uh, that sometimes when we grow up, that we take for granted. I think so uh, in this day and age. You know, uh, things was just a little different then, and uh, you know, as you get older, I know for me, uh, you know, I've competed all my life. Well, not all my life since I've been seventeen, and that side of it has been fun. But I think sometimes, you know. Uh, it's them things once it's gone that you really didn't realize how much you cherished them when it was here, you know. And I know for me, a lot of the the things that I have today uh, is simply because of what I was taught growing up as a as a child, you know, as as a kid. Well, a lot of these kids nowadays don't realize that. Yeah. You know, I was raised hard, and I raised my kids hard, but I raised them to be good at what they do yeah you know absolutely so um so your dad would have so he would have coon hunted some he would have uh that, that was kind of a passion of his so um when you uh, uh as you got older we're gonna actually go over to the we're gonna go over to the uh uh i i guess maybe the brains of this outfit as some would say uh, just joking, George. No, we're actually going to go over to Susan. She is. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're going to go over to uh, Susan Perriman. Now, uh, Susan, I'm going to have you share a little bit on... Now, I know we t talked earlier, so you didn't grow up around hounds. And uh, you and, and, and so share a little bit of how you and George met and uh, kind of what that was from your perspective, not growing up around that. And obviously, as we know, this was his life in his daddy's life so how did you guys meet and, and how was that adjustment when you guys got started well actually i did grow up with some hounds but they were hog dogs okay and um, my daddy hunted the hog dogs and then he'd bring the hogs home and we'd raise them and uh butcher them when they got big enough but uh i met george and uh actually at one of our skating ring dances and at 16 and we've been together actually since then so how many years have you guys been married 47 47 years that's amazing that's awesome yeah that's amazing it ain't yeah. been easy no but it's it, been ain't worth been it. Easy. it ain't been easy yes it's been worth it it's been worth it absolutely so you guys met and uh, here you meet this young lad and he's ate up like most of us do with when once you you know i, I always share with people uh, I know. I remember vividly the first time I went hunting with a hound, and uh, it's one of them things you either love it or you don't. And I fell in love with it, and it just never changed. So you meet this young lad that's ate up with it. So share a little bit about that. How it was. How it. Share with the folks a little bit what, uh, what it was to be uh, married to a, to a houndsman. You know, something that's passion because you know spare time it always goes to 
it always goes to that. So share a little bit about that. We'd love to hear that. Actually, I really enjoyed it. I okay. mean, um, I didn't have any other hobbies, so I always trailed behind him on his foot tails. And uh, then when we had our boys, uh, that was our outing. I mean, we'd take our hot dogs and marshmallows and we'd build us a fire and, and raise hot dogs and marshmallows until the boys got a little older and then they started without asking mama going ahead and following daddy. So that's what was how, that like? <laughs> that was that, was, tough. <laughs> that wasn't easy. I mean, yeah. it was hard to keep them uh, out of the woods when they was three years old, you know? Yeah. But uh, after a while, it didn't take much more than a year later, he was having to tote them on his back and uh, they wouldn't stay out of the woods. They, uh, but we still, they knew they could come on back to the truck and mama would have the fire going and the hot dogs and the drinks and everything else for them when they come back. So, so you, so you actually hunted a lot with George then. Uh, yeah, I outside. hunted a whole lot with him, and uh, of course, I got in trouble a lot when I was out there too, trying to help him. Right. Um, Tell us a little bit about that. He would go out, and uh, he would say, "If I get out here and I get, when I get the dogs caught, I need you to blow the horn." Well, <laughs> I'd blow the horn. And then I'd hear him holler, and I thought I was helping, so I'd get in the truck and I'd ride around to the other side of the block there, and uh, bl and blow it again. <laughs> I caught hell when he come out there. <laughs> <'Cause it, laughs> you was walking circles, George. Am I get? Is that what I'm getting? Hey, look at here. Five <laughs> hours trying to get out of him. And my buddy. And my buddy, I'd say, man, what the heck's going on? He says, I don't know. I says, and then I got, and I says, stop. And I hollered, I said, I said, she's riding in that truck. <laughs> I hollered, I said, if you move that truck one more time, I said, it's going to be hell to pay. <laughs> I, it's safe to say you guys finally got figured out when you got figured out when you blow the horn just yeah just we set. got it yeah. figured out <laughs> that's that's awesome so uh um george so you would have been uh going back to them to them times um you know things was a little different then uh t talk a little bit about uh you know obviously things have changed now today with electronics and stuff like that uh you know on some of them hunts you know trying to gather a dog up or Maybe not even finding it that night. And, right. You know what? What was your? What would you do? How would you? What would you do to to gather some of them up? Sometimes. Well, I'd blow the horn on my truck. And then when I'd go out there to feed them, I'd blow my horn. You know, get them, give them something to recognize. Yeah. To to come to. And that was pretty successful, but not like these electronics are today. You know, to holler. Oh. Right. Um, what's some of the, uh, growing up and then in your later years, uh, what, what's some of the dogs that you may have hunted with that uh, maybe really stood out to you? Maybe not ones that you owned, but maybe uh, dogs that you would have hunted with that you would have thought was, you know. Well, I'm sure everybody's heard of Joe House. I had some of his breed. And my cousin, his name was Bubba true story his name was Bubba and I got a mail dog from him and his name was Clint well Clint was a hell of a dog the one I had yeah and he come back to me and wanted the dog back and I let him have him back and he lived he lived right up here well matter of fact right down the road here from me back then and I'd Come up here to some, during the summer, you know, and stay and hunt. And Joe House's dogs was, I always wanted that bloodline in, in my dogs. Right. Did you ever get to meet Joe? I met him one time at a, uh, in Orangeburg. I didn't really meet him. I saw him pull up in a red and white Cadillac, and he had a dog. Had a hunt. Yeah. 
he had a doe in that red and white Cadillac. And I said, man, what are you doing with that dog in the sea? He said, he might as well. He said, he bought it. That's exactly what words he said. Would you have known what dog it was? It was Clint. It was Clint. House is Clint. Yeah. I mean, did you ever hunt the Grand American? Oh, yeah. Ever do any good there? No. Yeah. I didn't hunt it but one time. The Georgia State, the Florida State, all them hunts I hunted. And... I, what was it? Georgia State I won? Or Florida State? Florida State. Florida State that I won. Would you know what dog you was hunting then? Major? No, Ripper. Ripper. Yeah. Now, would you go with them, Susan, to them hunts? Uh, yeah, I would. We, we'd we actually take our tents and stay the weekend of the hunt right there on the clubhouse grounds. And uh, that was fun. Because when they'd go out, I'd stay around the clubhouse. All the all the wives would, and uh, we would mingle, and I'd meet people and enjoy that, and patiently waiting on them to come back into the club to find out who won. So yeah, we enjoyed that. Yeah, a lot more of a family atmosphere, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Nowadays, if these boys had to hunt like I hunted, they they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. Because I hunted for nothing. A trophy. You know, I was proud to get the trophy. Yeah. Absolutely. What, uh, uh, in the, in them years, uh, in you being a houndsman all your life, you know, you know, as a houndsman family or whatever, um, what's your thoughts on uh, the dogs of today and the dogs of then? Uh, much difference, you think, or... Uh, if there is a difference, where would you what would you see as a difference? There's no difference in the dog, you know. They they got good dogs, or well, we had good dogs back then, you know. But it's how you train them dogs is, you know. I, I like I see, I would see the coon go up the tree when the dogs got there. So you had to do that because, you know, you, you couldn't have no electronics. And that's how I trained my young dogs. When they left the road, I didn't turn coons out. I'd walk them through the woods. And eventually, they'd go on, and then I'd take off with them. And I'd see the coon go up the tree, and that's how I trained young dogs. And probably that's what's wrong with my legs today. Wore them out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had to walk back then. That was our transportation. Was our, we we call them the the uh, uh, lam, uh, lam graffitis. Yes, I guess sir. you could say. <laughs> yes. No, absolutely, uh, George. I know for me, uh, I had a couple memorable hunts, some funny experiences and stuff. Um, I know you talked about Leroy and you talked about your other friend there. Uh, maybe a couple memorable hunts. You know. Well, me and Johnny went turned out on on a Hexer Drive over there on the Mars and we was hunting Jack one of the Jack Wade's dog. And me and him got the dog and the dog treed. We went in there to it and I walked around, I could hear the dog. The dog I never seen the dog. And we shined up in a tree and Johnny come in there he said, oh, my God. He said, get that dog out of there. He said, Jack, he said, it's a $50 dog, Jack, and we want $1,000 for him. <laughs> so I climbed the tree, got the dog out of it, and put my put my belt around him, and I come down with one hand out of that tree and set it down. <laughs> so, well, it was, we laughed about that. Then. And then one time we was we got in the truck, and I looked in a ditch. I said, Johnny, that's a gator. Johnny said, that ain't no gator in that ditch. We pulled on up there, and there was about a 10-, 12-foot gator there, alive. <laughs> Johnny said, man, that's good eating. Let's, let's get him. So we got out, and I took the rifle. I said, ting, and it was bouncing off his head. <laughs> I shot seven times, and every time old Johnny would say, ah, that got him, he'd run down there and grab him by the tail, and that guy would turn on him and come back, and Johnny and that guy would going down the ditch. <laughs> yeah. 
So finally, we say, well, we better leave that gator alone. So we took a limb and beat him off, run him off out there in the road because you could tell where we'd been tore up the road. <laughs> right. So we went on, got our dogs out of the damn woods. Did you ever, uh, did you ever lose a dog um, to, you know, you know, you hear, you know, of different things of, you know, maybe a, a, where you would assume maybe a gator would have. Oh, got yeah. To him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because you, you guys have actually, you, you've lived there on that all your life, pretty much in a nutshell. Kill that fly there, right? But but you you, you lived, you, you kind of hunted around that all your life. Now, uh, did you did you travel much, uh, George and Susan? Did you guys go anywhere much more than just you know, like Florida, Georgia, South Carolina? Uh, yeah, we, primarily... we went to some of them. We didn't go to many. Yeah. We didn't have the money to do all that. Well, we lived, he worked for the timber division right where we lived at. So right. he had access to, some, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of acres. Some of the best hunting there was. I was very fortunate. And uh, we would uh, we would camp just about every weekend out there somewhere on the bluff, um, you know, in those acre, timber acres, and uh, that was like a weekend thing for us. Just and then he taught Hexer Drive, which was Jacksonville is probably twenty miles from Uly, and Hexer Drive's in Jacksonville, and we it's on the marsh, and we'd go over there, and we have a landing we could camp there. So we just camped around close home and, and, hunted, and right. hunted. So uh, let's go a little bit into uh, your boys. Now you guys have two. It, you have the two uh, two boys, right? Right. Um, right. Uh, and their names. We got uh, James. James James Perriman, our oldest one, and uh, Justin. I mean, T J Perriman. T J. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, so I know that you guys shared that, that you guys kind of brought them up in the hunting thing. So, share a little bit on as they got a little bit older, and, and uh, you know, uh, obviously, I think they was both actively in, uh, involved in, in, in hound hunting, and uh, what that meant to you guys, you know, as they grew up and took a passion for it as well. Well, I mean, I feel like I've turned out. Turned out two pretty good boys, two good hunters. I feel like that, you know. Very proud of it. But. What was it? What was it like? I know for me, uh, once I got the bug so hard as I got older, I couldn't get enough of it. And I remember, you know, having to get reprimanded on trying to keep my school grades up so I could hunt and and that kind of thing. And uh, you know. Uh, you know, by the sounds of it, they obviously was acting involved in hunting or whatever. Uh, do you guys have a little bit of that same deal there, or did you, or was or George tell me a little bit about that? You know, they knew they had to do their homework, and I would tear them riches up, you know, if they didn't. I had a little problem with Susan, but don't, oh, they can't go tonight. They got to go to school. I said, you might as well let them go. They ain't gonna learn nothing in school thinking about coon hunting or hunting. Right. And she get me, she get mad with me. Right. And that's how I handled it. Yeah. Um, now I know, I know your boy James. Uh, I know he uh, he actively uh, competes uh, in competition and stuff. And uh, but TJ, I don't think I've seen him much. He 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 didn't do the competitive side nah. of it that much. No, he just he just cared to just. He says he wants to get back into it, yeah. But he's working down in Jacksonville and doing good, yeah, yeah. And so he's not not really into he's not really into it like James. Now his son Justin, I mean Levi, is in, into it. Yeah. Now he was talking about he's working in Jacksonville. Going back to what have you done the majority of your life, George? A little of all of it. Right. Run For equipment. Work. Run yeah. equipment. Electrician. Welder. I could do any of it. I, I'm bragging a little bit here, but I didn't even I didn't even have to look for a job. I, I was just good enough that they called me here, way over here. I mean, I left one job and didn't get home good for it. They calling me to go to another job. You know, 
not leave, get laid off, you understand what I'm saying? Right, absolutely. And I'd take off to that job. Yeah. Susan, do, as you, uh, did you work some or did you? As you... I worked the whole time we've been married. I okay. just, just retired last year. Okay, and what'd you do? I've uh, uh, always worked in an office, human resource, with all the, the uh, accounts, payable accounts receivables and all the bookkeepings and payroll and everything. Absolutely. Um, now, I know you talked about Levi a little bit, uh, and I, I know you guys have a couple other uh, grandsons that are obviously highly competitive, uh, a little bit old, or I think they're a little, few years older than Levi. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, tell us a little bit about them. Well, we're we're real proud of them. They're, um, they're actually our handlers now and uh, working for us. And uh, just like last night, I was up all night and the night before, you know, supporting them with their hunts. And, uh, and uh, of course, it just brings the, the family together and uh, we really enjoy it. Right, and that would be Colt and Justin. That would be James's boys, That's right? That's James's boys, Colt yeah. and Justin. Levi's yeah. coming right behind them. I got Levi living with me now, and uh, uh, and it's all the time. It's every night that he's doing it too. Right. Well, it's safe to say when they get around it and they enjoy it, and that's what you guys uh, <laughs> talk about on a daily. You can't help but get uh, uh, excited about it. now. Uh, Colt and Justin, I know you guys uh, obviously uh, watch them grow up and uh, like shared. Uh, they're obviously competing and that kind of thing. And um, uh, tell us a little bit how it come about that uh, you know that they're that you guys was able to you know because uh, I think it's just recently is that right that uh, they started hunting for you guys is that is that right yeah Susan? that's yeah. that's very recent um, I mean they they've been doing it um, ever since they was old enough to follow their dad in the, in the woods yeah and uh, and me yeah oh yeah so you would remember them going with you George I took I took, I took them. When they couldn't drive or anything, I stayed up at night and took them. Yeah. And that's what you, you got to keep, the, the, the world is in such a screwed up situation. So you got to take these younger kids and do with them. Are they going to be out there in drugs or whatever, you know? Keep them in them woods. They can't hurt nothing in them woods, you know? Yeah. What, uh, talking of that, George... Um, what is, uh, uh what, what's your, I mean, what's your, uh, you know, from what it was then and what it is now and stuff, uh, I, I know in today's age, you know, there's, there's more stuff out there, a lot more easy, accessible uh, to get into and stuff like that. But, uh, I know for me, um, it was them kind of activities when we grew up as kids that, you know, uh, probably made us who we are today. And, um, you know, I know for me. Uh, especially even in my early 20s, uh, I was so ate up with it. It kept me out of a lot of trouble. And, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, you was talking about earlier, and I, uh, just a good point. Um, you know, when I grew up, we didn't have a tracking system to begin with. Uh, we had to follow a compass. Uh, I, I'm, I'm one that I'll tell you, I get lost. Yeah, it, get lost walking around trying to get out or, or have somebody holler you out. Uh, but you know, in today's age, uh, with uh, with the with the electronics that we have and uh, you know the equipment that we have, uh, it sure made it a lot easier. Uh, but I think that I think for a younger person, you can still have a lot of fun with it. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, I agree. Yeah, still have a lot of fun with it. Um, before we close here, uh, what? Um, what, what's it mean now? You know, obviously you guys have your, you know, you guys raised up in the in the hound community, and and you also you uh, your boys hunted, and, and now your grandsons are obviously uh, uh, following the family tradition. What's that mean to you guys? You know that I guess on that side of it, on the it means the world to me. I mean, and her. I'm not speaking for her, but you know. The only thing that hurts me is I can't get out there and go. But you do go once in a while and sit in the truck, don't you? Yep. Yeah. And I'm sure that's enjoyable too as well. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But it ain't as much fun as going out there to the tree. Yeah. 
but my legs won't do it. I mean, I've tried it. I'd get off out there and fall down and get mad and say, y'all go ahead, I'm going back to the truck. Absolutely. Well, I really, I really enjoyed just sitting in the truck and listening to the dogs. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I've gotten more into it now in my older age than I have before because, simply because I have more of the the family, the the grandkids and the sons and and all into it also, and I just want to learn it more. And uh, but and I learn it by going and sitting in the truck and letting them tell me what I got to listen for and what's got to be done, you know. So uh, I go quite often and sit in the truck now that I'm close to where James. James lives, the oldest boy, and uh, the grandkids are really into it hard, and uh, I just, I really enjoy it. It's, okay. it's a family thing. Yeah. You, uh, I see, just looking out your guys' kitchen window here, uh, I think, I believe that's a, a fairly new, what, seven dog uh, kennel out there that you guys just put in or whatever, so... Uh, it looks to me like uh, you guys do a lot of that. You guys uh, take care of a lot of the dogs here. I'm sure you guys enjoy that side. Of how how did it come about you guys decided to get a kennel? I wanted something to do when I retired. And uh, that's that's what I can do. I mean, I can, I can tend to the dogs and uh, watch them, be close to them, and watch them grow up. And I want to breed is what I want to do. And I know... We've got some good dogs out there that we can breed and uh, watch them make coon dogs. Right. Now, uh, um, I know, uh, I, I believe it was just a few years ago that Justin, one of your grandsons, won the, won the youth, won the youth, uh, youth World, right? Youth Is that World, correct? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I know that they've been on a roll here as of late. Uh, tell me, Susan, d did you ever imagine that? a person could and George both that a person could hunt for the kind of purse you know that that they're hunting for today well I, was, I didn't I never heard of that kind of money what they paying you know I'm amazed at the amount of money they're making yeah and but they live it see them boys live it and breathe it I mean it's just and that's the only way you can be productive in anything you got to take an interest in anything that that they do and not play grab ass you know you got to get serious about it you got to do it and and they hunt uh -huh. they, they they hunt aside from just hunting at a hunt right yep, absolutely absolutely uh susan in in our in some of our parts uh of the competitive world your your kind of uh nickname is as mama para Paraman, like the the boss of the show, or, or the, <laughs> the oversteer of the show. Favorite dog? Which what's your favorite dog you have? At the time My favorite moment? dog is Mary. I figured you was going to say I mean, that. that's what... I started out just wanting to breed dogs. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to start following the grandkids and uh, supporting them with entry fees and getting them in the hunts and making the money we're making. And... Uh, Mary's my favorite. I mean, we we bought her at a real good price, and I, we already know she's worth a whole lot more than what we paid for. Her. Right. And uh, I don't want to share. I see a lot of people wanting to, you know, buy in on her, and and I um I guess favorite dog you don't you don't want to share. It. <laughs> right. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, you know, if you own, if you guys own it, you can kind of control what happens there or whatever. But right. uh, George, you got a favorite one? Or you the one that'll treat you coon. <laughs> one that'll treat you coon. That's a good answer. You know like what? That. You know what? <laughs> I'm good enough to pretty well, one time, tell you what dog is, what dog going to do what. I've hunted so many years and been with so many different kinds. If I can see that dog perform one time, I'm going to tell you what that dog is going to do. Just like that dog of James's or ours. What's his name? 
Which one? Said, said be, no, said he was a tree opossum. Oh, that shooter. Well, shooter. I told James. I said, James, I said, that dog right there, you can break him off of an possum and he'll be one of the top dogs in this kennel. And he is. Yeah. I actually wouldn't have one when he's young that wouldn't tree a possum. I wouldn't have him. Because if he won't tree a possum, he won't tree nothing. Now, you don't want him to stay on him. You want to break him and let him know that that's not right. Break him. And that's how you train a dog, man. you got to... That dog didn't know he was doing wrong. you got to let him know he's doing wrong. Right. And a lot of times you don't have to beat them. Yeah. To their own mercy. Right. Did you... Uh, uh, did you... Did did you hunt any other uh, did you hunt any other thing other than a, a coon? I know we talked about it briefly. Or would you use dogs on anything else? Hogs. Um, hogs. You used to have yeah. What was that experience like? I've I've never been. They say it's. It, it's I've done it's it fun. pretty much. I I actually caught hogs for rare near timber division. Paid to hunt, and I had two two dogs. It was about that high. Named Spot and Stony. Well, I'd put Pot, Spot, and Stony up on the dog box, and I'd ease through the woods, down the road. Spot would say, yep. I'd stop, get out, him and Stony go in there and bait that hog up, and then I'd go in there and catch him. You know, I caught two and three hundred pound hogs right by myself. And and you'd tie them up? Tie them up. Load them up and bring them out of there? Yeah. Yeah. Many of them. I've had... A whole pen full at the house, and then boys, but you know, they them young guys come up there and they said, "Man, let me, let me, let me go in there with them hogs." I said, "Go ahead." <laughs> I said, "But I tell you what, I do. I bet you fifty dollars I can go in there with them." Ah, nah. If we can't, you can't. I said, "Well, yeah, I can. I'll scratch them down, make them lay down." And how I did it? I'd take a bucket of corn. And I'd pee in it and feed it to them. Well, what does that tell you? To get used to my scent, my smell of food. You can tame cows. You can tame about any kind of wild animal there is. But nobody else can get around them except you. I just learned something. I never heard. That's that's pretty amazing. Does it work? It works. I seen him... uh... Heard up a bunch of um, old wood, which cows? Woods cows, and it take about a week, yeah. maybe maybe two weeks if that, and uh, he'd have them coming, all of them coming in there to him. Pin them up, pin them up right then. <laughs> That's amazing. But I'd have to if you was with me, I'd have to tell you. So now you need to get on that side and hide, and I could walk around in there with them. Drive them in the shoot, whatever. But as soon as a stranger come around there, it was done. Uh, yeah, I'll be. Yeah, so you, so you, you would have, you would have ran hogs some with Hans or whatever. Did you ever do the deer? I know down. Oh was, yeah. yeah. Did you have, Did you enjoy that? Oh yeah. 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 Now, did you? Now back then, did you hunt them with big packs or, or you know, I know a lot of anywhere from 10, 20, 20 is about the most. Yeah. That's deer. Yeah. I don't know what hounds doing. that you would run on. Yeah. What 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 was a lot of the hounds they used for them? Uh, just anything they could get their hands on, or did you have particular ones that was better than other ones? Oh yeah, they uh, Julys and just regular old Walker dogs, and I mean I've sold coon dog or blue ticks, red ticks, and all that that turned and got on deer. You know, I'd sell them for deer dogs. Yeah. Did you ever have a favorite breed that you always kind of followed, or or it didn't matter for deer hunting? You don't for know? for hounds in general. Well, red ticks and walkers. Yeah. What, what? like an English? I, I like an English dog. Yeah. Cause you can you can put too much blood to a, a dog. Now I'd like to cross a blue tick. 
and it's Ian Walker. Yeah. You can get an English dog. Yeah. That's actually what I'm hunting right now is a, is a, a little female. That actually, her sire is a blue tick and her, uh, her uh, dam is a walker. So, absolutely. Yeah. So, well, hey, it was really good uh, sitting down here and, and, and visiting with you, uh, with you guys. And maybe we can do this again sometime. So, I really appreciate you guys' time and, and uh, look forward to uh, watching you, you guys and, and obviously your, your, your sons and grandsons as they uh, uh, keep doing what we always enjoy, all enjoy doing. Any parting thoughts? Just God bless you and be good. Absolutely, Susan. No, it's, I'm fine. Okay, absolutely. Well, thank you, guys. And with that, we're going to uh, sign off. Don't forget to log this episode on Go Wild. Make sure you're sharing this podcast with all your fellow houndsmen. Leave us a review and a like over on Apple Podcasts. And always remember, it all starts with the truth.